it's getting close here. Before yeah, yeah. before that though, Mike, I must say you guys, Reed has the most comfortable carpet in the entire show double floor. Padding, double double padding. Oh yeah, we are not leaving. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry about that. No, it's all good. So what do we got? Well, this is Jasper, he's a Reed customer. He owns a 1996 uh, Reed M40, which is equivalent to this A40 HP. And we were just talking about how much he enjoys this pump. And by the way, this wasn't set up, I promise you. Great. No, this is organic. This yeah. is cool. totally cool. out. Yeah, cool. no, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. But I know this guy from Facebook, Scott Sutherland. Um, but, yeah, uh, Scott. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's where us old guys convene is Facebook. Oh, uh -huh. We're trying to get into the TikTok and no, Instagram no, but, and stuff. You know, it's but, funny, we were just talking about that. He was saying that he saw all the, the videos on how to change wear parts on our website, right? On YouTube. On YouTube. Thanks to Mike. No, thanks. Well, I don't follow enough people. Apparently, the Canadian concrete pumping. Uh, 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 I need to. I need to Canadian pump. concrete pump -er? pumpers. Pumper. Oh, Mike, oh, come, on. Uh, come on. Anyway. So you're running a 1996 model. You still rock it every every day? Uh, I wish it was every day, but as much as possible. You, I would say I do maybe one to two pump jobs a week that are just line pumping and then I will go and do skate park specific projects where we're doing shock creating. Oh, you're shock creating with it? Two to four weeks where it's Monday through Friday. In 1996. Yeah. The shock create is tough business too. In upstate New York, no doubt. Oh, wow. Yep. So, well, that's, yeah. a, that's a heck of a story. Yeah. So 96, so when are you gonna buy something new? When well, I while we're here. When I continue to keep making money. Mike, ring it up, and ring it up. Ring it up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, feel like I've, I've, I've worked hard enough to give myself the luxury of having this sit in my shop alongside of my 1996 that I will forever love and forever keep and try and uh, build up a fleet of them is a dream. My, my first pump was a 1989 line pump and I sold it to a friend of mine. And I've seriously considered buying it back. Oh, yeah, like just an old car, basically. Oh, it's just like it so much sentimental value to it. Yeah. So, well, that's a heck of a story, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. It's great, yeah, great meeting you. Nice yeah. And uh, with, you were with Catterskill, Catterskill Concrete in upstate New York. Yep. Awesome, man. Yeah, cool. Hey, thanks. Sorry for bugging you. That's too. all good. That's <laughs> this all is good. actually uh, Caleb. He's got a YouTube channel too, Concrete Pumping Service. Concrete Pumping Service. Eighty yeah. percent shot crate. Yeah, I would say prior. Lot, a lot there. of shot crate. Yep. A lot of yep. shot South crate. Dakota. Very cool. So well, we've been yep. talking all, all week about how we wanted to get by and see the reed pumps. So really, finally we're here. I yep. thank you guys for coming by, uh, giving us some, uh, I'm sure you have some followers. I'll be one soon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, share, subscribe. Yeah. And uh, so this is this is where uh, reed got its name. is from a guy named Frank Reed. He invented this little machine uh, back in the early 60s. It's called a bowl type gunite machine. It's a cheap little machine. It's about 14 grand. But it's cool. You you break a bag of material on this thing. You put some uh, compressed air to it, and then you add uh, some like a water hose to the nozzle, and you can spray overhead for like concrete repair. You can do swimming pools with bigger versions. But this is a really bitchin' concrete repair machine. And so anyway, in the 80s, we got into concrete pumps, and so we started evolving and so forth. And now we've come to this, which is. The, the, the beast. This is this is the be-all, end-all shot creek, Caleb. Yeah. I'm sure you know of these machines. Oh, yes. What it's, is it? 220 horse? Or what is it? 225 horse, 180 cc, and it's a closed loop over over high, um, center hydraulics. They're so, they're so smooth. They're I've seen it, them through 300 feet of two-inch holes, and it's just like, and, just silky smooth. And only, I think, Putzmeister offers that, that same thing where they can, they'll speed up the stroke. Yeah, push over hydraulic, end. POH. Yeah, yeah. It's at, the, at the very second, a bit, as far as line pumps, I'm not sure if anybody else has that. Maybe they do on, on the For closed loop? Uh, for closed loop. I think you guys, for this size of line pump, I think you guys are the only one I running so closed too. loop. I'm, I'm very confident in that, so actually. So that combined with the 42 inch stroke, and just the fact that you can push 650 feet with dual nozzles, which is common. Yeah. There's one guy, this company actually has a video on our website doing 1250 foot push through two inch. Um, oh, A1 out of A1. California, I, I've seen that. It's, it's a heck of a, if I can find it, I'll put the link up here oh, somewhere. It's a heck of a video. I appreciate that. Anyway, it's a wonderful pump and and uh, everybody loves it. And most of these guys own six or eight of these things. Now it looks like your panel is reverted back to more uh, simple toggle switches. Okay, is so this correct? This is correct. See, I noticed things, Mike. Our I noticed our things. Our dealers are huge fans of this. Um, after a lot of bitching about, uh, uh, what do you call them, rubber keypads failing. Yeah. <clears throat> We sell them for cost, just so you know, just for a couple <laughs> hundred bucks. But now we, we re reverted back to the toggles, and even if the screen goes out, you can still run on toggle like 
in the old days. So. Oh really? So you're not you're not reliant on the screen whatsoever to get the job done. Yeah. So this is a total monster. Um, now what I'm looking at for like the the kind of uh, the, the the bread and butter like what we would use a B50 yeah. HP. Yeah. So we have a B50 HP, and we also have a B50 HPS. The HP has a 36 inch stroke, and the HPS has a 42 inch stroke. Um, and so you know uh, different different feel. What's what's the pressure on this one? This one is 1361. I believe the HPS is 1778 uh, PSI. It is. It is. Yeah. I don't ask me why I know this stuff. I'm weird like that. 130 horse Cummins. Um, now this is going to be a different type of hydraulic system, not as complicated as the C50SS. It's the open loop, which is more traditional for yep. most line pumps. And uh, it's it's a simple machine. It's we've had the same flat pack in, in you know since like the 80s. Uh, but uh, it, something else that's notable is because this only has 1361 psi versus that one with 2000 psi, we've got crazy reinforcement on that orange one that you just looked at. Yes. Um, but but that being said, this one still doesn't ever flex. That's the thing with the reed is that if you look at the the way that we build the back of the hopper, by the way, these are just for the hopper grate, but um, the steel we use and, and all of the welds and everything, it's just crazy beefy. That's like our whole... It doesn't flex like a food. It doesn't ever flex. Well, I remember at Con Expo, I think it was either yourself or Albert explaining with the hoppers made in-house. We do. It's like this, the same guy that's been building hoppers for like... Well, there's there's a couple guys building hoppers, but yeah, no, you're right. It's, it's, Long-term staff, and he was telling me something about like the the serial number correlates oh, who yeah. actually on built back, that hopper. On the back, it shows you who built it. Yeah, it's it, it, that's one of the things we, we have as an advantage versus companies like <clears throat> um, other companies <laughs> who buy flat packs from Turkey. Uh, yeah, so we make everything in-house in Chino, California. Uh, we're American-owned. Uh, our parent company's been around since 1881, and uh, they bought us in 1970. But uh, yeah, we, we try so like to make- like a classic American manufacturing story. We are. Nice big heavy frame on this too. Oh, it is. Crazy. No issues with cracks there, I imagine. She, no, no, uh, you, these things, if they do flip, which by the way, some people talk um, <coughs> talk about uh, <laughs> online, but if they do flip- Mike, you, you have a cough, are you okay? What about your cough? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you flip it back over, and there might be a little, little scuff here or there, but, but I mean, it, you, these things last forever, forever. Really, it's it's a great. So, what what would you say for your most common pump for a contractor, a pumping contractor that does a bit of everything, a bit of flat work, maybe a little bit of shock creak? What is this the one? Well, uh, it depends on distances and so forth. The A40 can do both, and it's and it's just a huge price difference between that because you're paying for the Cummins versus the Perkins, you know. Oh, okay. So, so our top seller is the A40. Over so we there. should look at that one then. Okay. And what's but, what's the pressure on the A40? Uh, this is uh, 1174 psi. Okay. And it's but it's only got a 74 horse engine. So a lot of these guys are buying line pumps, and and you got to really take that into consideration is is the size of the the motor, as well as the size of the main hydraulic pump. You know. <coughs> So a 74 horse, there's no def fluid to contend with, correct? This is the, the advantage. We also have another pump called a B50G, which is a, a, a B50 flat pack like that, but we use the uh, Ford V8 uh, 6.7 liter from, I remember a, from seeing our Ford that Expo. And, and we're gonna have a new seven point something liter Ford uh, coming out now, because they're phasing out the 6.7. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's, but anyway, we continue that line too, because you don't have to deal with DEF or all the emissions, BS. It actually, axle. engine replacement cost was significantly less as well, wasn't it? Compared to a diesel? Oh. It's it's because it doesn't have the def equipment. It's a huge jump down in price. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, too bad there isn't one here. That was really interesting. Right? I, I'm yeah. sorry about that. But well, maybe that... next year. You know, we we, we can't. Uh, you know, we got to save some stuff for next year, right? Yeah, I think we've got about 17 models. These are only a few of the, the ones we offer. We also do skid mounted, electric uh, mounted. We're working on battery powered stuff right now. So, um, but yeah, we we have line pumps for any possible like you know. Four inch, the, the my material cylinders, four inch, five inch, six inch, seven, eight inch, whatever, whatever you need it for. Yeah. So it's 74 horsepower. <laughs> yes. Where does the horsepower come into play when you're on a really long push? It, Correct. Vo volume wise, is that is that kind of kind of what it is? Exactly what it is. Okay. It, it, you think so, I pump concrete once in a while or something? Yeah. No, but also. Um, one of the things that's important is when you look at the different manufacturers is, is what RPM they run the machine at. Yeah. Like this one runs a little high joiner. Is this 
do, do we run this thing at 20, 2100 uh, RPM? Yes. And then 1750 on the B series. Dwayne, so the B Dwayne's like the genie, you rub the genie and it's just come <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> no, this is Dwayne Remus, our, our director of technical development. Hello. He's, Hi, Dwayne. He's uh, worked for a lot of the pump companies, but but uh, for, for the, the heavier duty, more expensive pumps, um, they'll, they'll run it at a 1750 uh, RPM as opposed to some of our other competitors who spin the crap out of uh, you know the main hydraulic yeah. pumps, the tiny baby inexpensive yeah. hydraulic pumps. Um, we do it at the perfect spot in the torque curve for the for the pump, which is why people who run both pumps will say it just keeps going and going and going because it's it's right at the ideal spot in the torque right. curve. So anyway, we we buy really expensive components. We spend a, a ton of money making in stuff in house and not buying it from Turkey, and uh, <clears throat> and. Uh, so, so yeah, our pumps are more expensive than everyone else's, but we also think they're better. I like that. Straight to the, <laughs> no, seriously, no, no BS, like straight yeah. to it, right? So, so Caleb, which one would you take? Probably that guy. That's the practical one, right? Oh yeah, yeah no, that, that, that. and these things will last forever too. Like I, I think what we with what we do, a B fifty HP is perfect. I, th I think an HPS. If we were doing shock crate every day, HPS may, maybe HPS. No, you don't need the HPS. But I think what do you get many guys that, that truck mount these? Can you do them on a skid? A lot of customers, a lot of our dealers, especially in, in small cities, what they'll do is yeah, we'll ship it without the axle or the fenders, and we'll put it on a temporary skid, and all they'll do is uh, just drop it on the frame rails of a truck. And uh, and then just get it mounted locally. You know, just cut the the um, crossbars yep. and, and reweld it. And the reason for that is that it'll outlast maybe three, four trucks. I, I have I have you know because it, the pump will last forever. And so, like I said, that's common in uh, Georgia, uh, New York City, uh, Chicago. Like there's a handful of places where where parking is a is a really big problem. San Francisco. Even in our city, trying to tow a trailer with extra 20 oh. feet of length. It's a bear. Yeah. So, so tr truck mount is, is the way to go. Yeah. And, and the advantage of, of truck mounting a pony a motor like this is you don't have to deal with all the BS that has to go that comes from the uh, the PTO driven versions. And we built a bunch of those in the past. I hate selling them, and I don't think I ever will again. I hope I don't. Um, <laughs> no, because the computer of the truck has to communicate with the computer on the pump, and then and then okay, so it's time to replace the the truck, right? Good luck rewiring because there's so much custom plumbing and all that stuff it's a pain in the in the butt uh, so uh really this is the clean way to go is to just buy one of these and just keep it and just keep remounting it again and again and again it's a beautiful machine i just love how simple solid clean everything is right the hopper's got a nice long s tube on it with a nice gradual reduction, so I, I would assume it's much less prone to build up on pumping shot creep. You're, you're correct, and it doesn't have any weird reduction pieces in between the material cylinder, oh, yeah. which, which causes binding, like some of our competitors do, where they try to use a seven inch diameter material cylinder, reducing to a six inch. Right, uh, right. Yeah, and so so it's a straight through, that's true of all of our pumps, is, is it's it's the material cylinder will match up perfectly with the backside of, this, of the uh, uh, wear plate. So it's a very efficient transition, less prone to build up. I see. So you guys use nylon cups on the pistons. What's yep. the reasoning for nylon cups? Well, they're cheap. A and B. This is why we use hydraulic oil in our in our what is called the water box. We call it flesh box, um, because when you heat up the the hydraulics, uh, you know, in, in it'll it's possible that micro uh, pieces of, of water will get into the hydraulic system. So we prefer to have hydraulic oil inside the. Uh, uh, the flesh box, so it doesn't it doesn't penetrate inside the, the main hydraulic system. Oh, okay. And Dwayne Remus, by the way, if you ever really wanted to know the engineering stuff behind it, the guy we just woke up over there. Yeah, he, <laughs> all the, all he, the techie stuff. He, yeah, he could explain it better than me. I, I just. Okay, so the nylon cups, you always want to put a bit of oil, do you, uh, with like mineral oil or something in there. No, or no, actual well, you, hydraulic. You just take the used hydraulic oil from your first change yeah. in 50 hours, and you just and you just save it, and you just dump it in there, and just make sure it's maintained. It, is, is it mixed with water or it's straight hydraulic? Straight hydraulic. Oh, really? And it's one of the benefits. Oh. Of, so you know, it's really easy to see, just like with with water box. Okay, yeah. It's not like a boom pump where you're flushing it out every day. Yeah. It stays yeah, in there right and you just keep looking at the oh, level okay. and make sure it, it's like above the cylinders and, and you're good. But uh, So there's a lot, of, a lot of really unique things to your pumps in. This is true. They really set them apart. No, it's a beautiful rig. I mean, all these things look so well built. I, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to show us around. And maybe next year we'll have a, a gas-powered version of the show. 
probably a seven point whatever version the next the next raptor version is yes. okay so next year we can do that video i would love it. shake on it i, I promise all right mike newcomb reed concrete pumps appreciate the time mike scott thank you very much and uh caleb yeah. thank you thank you and uh Matt. Matt, okay. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks for coming by. I yeah, appreciate, appreciate it, Mike. It's always good talking to you. Yeah. Thank you. Mike's doing the right thing here by subscribing to both of our channels. Yes, I am. Everybody subscribe. Highly suggested. If, if Mike that can do it, can and I can do it, a couple old guys like us, you can do it too. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Buy a read. Subscribe. <laughs>